Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about my top two favorite backend or general purpose languages. So let's get into it. So the question in question was pretty much that. Frederick, what, what are your top favorite backend or general purpose languages for the future, excluding PHP and Java? I feel that there is a bit of an agenda here. It's an it's a, it's a specific question, but uh, I will comply. And the short answer is that my two favorite languages for general purpose and backend development are number one, TypeScript, and number two, Rust. Not in necessarily that order, but they are they are definitely my two top favorite ones, depending a little bit on what I do. So the reason why I think that Rust and TypeScript at the very least are going to be some of the most two of the most important languages for the future is because if we like just talk about TypeScript first so I'm very sorry to disappoint everybody who hates JavaScript but until the browser gets another way of working JavaScript is going to be a thing I'm sorry I know everybody is very disappointed but I'm sorry the browser and the internet is a huge deal and it uses JavaScript therefore you're gonna need to deal with JavaScript and since the introduction of TypeScript the JavaScript community has taken to TypeScript quick it has grown in popularity really really quick for a very good reason it has f f understood what it should do in order to make JavaScript a nicer experience the old styles of what you know CoffeeScript and Elm and so forth They've tried, there are other examples of, and you know, transpilation such as compiling Java code to JavaScript code. All of these different strategies have been tried, but they haven't really been adopted. They haven't really gotten that explosive adoption rate, which TypeScript has. And I believe that the reason is very simple. Microsoft understood that the best strategy is just to add a type system to JavaScript. Don't try to make it another language, don't try to convert it into something else and make all these different problems arise where you're taking one language, converting it into another, because there's tons of problems related to this. Just take the language for what it is and add a type system, because that is what fundamentally is lacking. And they did that. And it has worked so far really, really well. And I think it's going to continue working because TypeScript adds a level, a sorely needed level of maturity to JavaScript. If you, you can do very serious software development in TypeScript, I would say that there, with a few exceptions now, uh, there are a few things that still needs to be fixed in uh, JavaScript. But with TypeScript, I really don't see a reason why you wouldn't use uh, TypeScript um, nodes, for example, to practically do all forms of the standard web development anything that Java can do anything that PHP can do like all of this stuff I don't see any reason why you wouldn't use TypeScript to do it because fundamentally there are so many benefits since you already know that you need in order to have a web UI of some sort or some type of web presence you need JavaScript you can decide to use it for the entire stack if you want to. You don't have to, but I really don't see a reason to if you already know how to deal with it. The thing that I still think is a little bit problematic has not so much to do with TypeScript and JavaScript as a language. It has more to do with the community. What's lacking for the adoption to go really through the roof and, uh, give, uh, and to give TypeScript a, sh a shot at becoming the de facto standard for enterprise development when it comes to web and like the standard CRUD applications that most of us are building. I believe for that to happen, we need to prove within the community that the process of developing TypeScript and JavaScript applications has matured to the point where we can rival Java and C Sharp. If you can get to the point where people who work in C Sharp and Java and like a traditional enterprise level development kind of just acknowledge that, well, yeah, the language can do what I do here, and the way that the like the culture works in these like in 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 TypeScript, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. If we can get to that level, then I wouldn't see any reason why TypeScript wouldn't be the first choice, like the default choice for practically practically any web application. It could be, I would say, where PHP is today, where like quite a lot of people just default when they're making a web page of some sort to PHP and I think that that can happen for TypeScript as well. So that's TypeScript. I really love it because it 
adds a lot of maturity to JavaScript and it gives you a really fast work process and iteration flow, which I think is absolutely lovely. And there's so many libraries and choices and learning resources. Let's talk about Rust. So Rust, I will argue, is the second uh, language that I, my second favorite language. I honestly, I think I've, I've narrowed down because I used to work in quite a lot of different languages, but these days I practically only, for my personal projects, work in TypeScript and in Rust. So Rust, I believe, is probably the most important language of today. Like present day, it's most the. It's not the most. It's not going to give you job stability. It's not at that point yet. I'm very sorry to say, but I believe it is. It is the most important language, for a very specific reason, and that is that it fundamentally solves a sorely ne a, a, a really big problem that has been around for quite some time, which is the problems that we've had with the lower level languages such as C and C++, which has when and the most fundamental problems are that these are unsafe languages and they're not they're not that easy to make memory safe. And Rust does actually help with this. And it's it gives us honestly, I think that for a lack of a better thing to say, I think that Rust is bringing back systems development. I'm not saying that it went anywhere, I'm just saying that it becomes m more accessible and I think more people are comfortable with the workflow that Rust presents and uh, if they're getting into systems, developments, systems development today, then where if you were going to go with C or C++. It's just an ecosystem that is a little bit more up, uh, up to date, I would say. Now, the the thing that I believe, however, that needs to happen for Rust to actually become truly, truly adopted, I think that it is the language of the future in many ways, because it, it solves such an important problem, and it's also managed by Mozilla, which is a great thing. Like it has all the all the possibilities to completely take over. E, I would say even for I think that we can actually even get to a point where. Rust becomes a very serious consideration. I don't think it's going to get get to a point where it's the de facto standard, because there are things in Rust that are problematic to deal with for new developers. And it's, it, there is a bit of a learning curve still, and there are things that you need to deal with in Rust that you may not want to deal with, which is the, what, one of the reasons why I argue that Go became so popular. Go with the garbage collector is in many ways a nicer experience if you're going to develop web applications. But Rust has a massive performance boost and there are other benefits related to Rust development that I think will make it a very feasible option. If you look, it was not that long ago that I believe that Microsoft went out and said that they're going to slowly start moving over the Azure platform to to Rust because they have a lot of C and C++ code and like so they're moving in that direction and a lot of other companies such as Discourse, I think that they posted an article stating that they're actually moving from Go to Rust for the very same sorts of reason. So I believe that because the thing is, that's what's so powerful about Rust. It's it's in my world just a, another iteration on top of languages such as C and C++. It's just the it's just the next step, and it's a very nice step, and it solves it creates a solution to a lot of hard problems. So there is motivation to actually move. A lot of languages are just recreating the same thing. There's no real they're not really bringing anything tangible to the table apart from a different workflow. It's um, so. That's not, and that's the thing. That's what you have to give the community if you want to make a real impact and really make people adopt something. You need to give them a really good incentive to go from one thing to the other. And I think that Rust brings that. And that's the beautiful part about it. It gives us the ability, or it gives us a very feasible, at the very least, way to create extremely high performance solutions for every level of the stack with a lower risk of fucking the whole thing up. So what I want you to take away from this is that at least for me, my two favorite languages for, I would say today, uh, but more in the future, is TypeScript and Rust. I believe that TypeScript today is probably one of the best, best choices for most web endeavors like using TypeScript if you have a front-end application you should definitely be using TypeScript for sure it makes it so much easier to scale your system and with a few tweaks to the JavaScript specification I believe that TypeScript could become the new PHP or like the de facto standard for most people when we do web development
The second language is Rust, which I believe uh, that it's probably the most important language we have today. It gives us a shot at solving a lot of the old issues that exist in C and C++. And the thing that I will that I believe that will dictate the future of Rust is how many of the larger corporations gets behind this idea that they should more start moving over to Rust. Because the Rust is being maintained by Mozilla, which is a great thing. Now we really only need to see that adoption rate. The love is there, the community loves Rust, but we need to see that adoption rate. And if that happens, I think that it will be become the, the de facto standard for at least lower levels of programming, but I also believe that it has a really good shot at making it way in making its way into higher forms of, of application development, even in web. And I think that that would be an amazing, amazing thing if that happened. Have a great day.